Ladies and gentlemen, we will begin today's ceremony in five minutes. Please silence your phones and take your seats. Thank you.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and aloha. On behalf of the National Park Service and our partners, welcome to the 82nd Anniversary Memorial Commemoration, honoring the USS Oklahoma BB-37 and her crew. Today's event serves to honor the fallen service members and remembers the sacrifices that were made on December 7th, 1941. I am David Kilton, Interpretation, Education, and Visitor Services Lead at Pearl Harbor National Memorial. I am honored to serve as your Master of Ceremonies. I would like to recognize our speakers, our partners, our distinguished guests, and most importantly, we welcome our veterans and their families. Thank you all for joining us to remember the USS Oklahoma and honor the sacrifices of her crew. Guests, please rise. <clears throat> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early rise? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bones bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there, oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave oh, the land and now the free and the I'd like to thank Donald Fiakowski and the, and the United States Pacific Fleet Band for their support today. Captain Gary Thornton, Forest Chaplain Commander, Navy Region Hawaii, will now deliver the invocation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me in this prayer. Let us pray. Holy Father, strong to save, we thank you for your abiding presence here today and for each of these in attendance. 
We especially thank you for any of our Pearl Harbor survivors or World War II veterans who may be with us today. Here in this beautiful place, Pearl Harbor, we gather to remember. We remember the many ships damaged and sunk on that fateful day so long ago. We especially remember the Arizona, the Utah, and yes, the brawny battleship Oklahoma. Most importantly, we remember the lives lost. Immortal One, look on here as we have not forgotten. The USS Oklahoma and her 429 sailors were heroes. They demonstrated valor. They were shipmates who prematurely lost their lives. Sunday, December 7th, 1941 began as a day just like any other Sunday. But for the crew of the Oklahoma, it became a day like no other, a date which lives in infamy. How then, O oh Lord, shall we remember them, those who died? We mourn the dead. Once again, we remember their valiant acts of bravery and heroism, and we honor their memory. And in so doing, may the sting of their loss be overshadowed by the guarantee that they selfishly purchased for us, that which we now enjoy, a future of freedom and a legacy of hope. Here their sacrifice will not be forgotten. We simply say thank you, shipmates. We have the watch. Lord, we pledge to follow their example of service and sacrifice. Almighty God of grace and glory, we close this prayer asking that you would preserve and protect all of those in every clime and place and in harm's way. Also be with their family members, friends, and loved ones. And as we prepare to continue in this ceremony, we pray again your presence and your blessing. This we ask in your mighty name, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Amen. Thank you, Captain Thornton. You may all be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Captain, Ho Captain Homer Hen Hensey, Executive Officer of Pearl Harbor Naval, Naval Shipyard and Intermediate Maintenance Facility. Thank you, Dave. And thank you all for being here today. Every day when I walk into my office building, I see the helm of the USS Oklahoma suspended above the entrance. The actual helm salvaged from the battleship 37 many years ago. It symbolizes our unwavering commitment to the military and reinforces the vital role Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard played in supporting the fleet, freedom, and safety that has enjoyed today from the sacrifice of so many. What I know about the day of infamy here at Pearl Harbor is that there are many people who, without hesitation, tackled fires, organized ammunition passing operations, repaired disabled engines, and rescued individuals trapped in the sunken ships. These responders were not just sailors or soldiers. They were skilled tradesmen from the Navy Yard, who stepped up while going up against impossible odds, and by all measures and accounts, not their expected response that day. Their selfless efforts not only saved numerous lives, but were instrumental in resurrecting a fleet that brought solace to the world, engulfed in chaos, and represented by the USS Missouri at the end of the World War with an unconditional surrender by the Japanese Empire in just under four years. As Oklahoma listed, riddled with torpedo hits, nine to be exact, Pearl Harbor Shipyard spent hours working their way to cut, pry, and pull away her hull to rescue the trapped sailors from the ship. Their heroic actions in saving 32 sailors who emerged from the dark hull beneath the sea once again to bask in the sunny Hawaiian skies. Even in the darkest of times, the heroic actions of these individuals serve as a testament to the indomitable spirit that prevailed in the hearts and minds of the greatest generation. After the Pearl Harbor attack, 
These same patriots helped turn the tide of war at Midway when the battered and bloodied USS Yorktown aircraft carrier limped back into Pearl Harbor, followed by the Battle of the Coral Sea. And within minutes, our repairmen swarmed the dry dock, and eventually 1,400 of them would work around the clock for almost 72 hours to get the ship back underway to fight. This monumental repair effort revived Yorktown and solidified Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard as a national strategic asset. Today, that unwavering dedication and spirit continues as our shipyard workers script history as they support the Navy in safeguarding international sea lanes. Our workforce and military personnel are bonded together as fortified Ohana and together perform work that is strategically important for our nation. They embody our motto, we keep them fit to fight. On this day, our nation joins you in grief. We mourn with you. We internalize all that was sacrificed that day. But one could never imagine the pain you feel as we stand at this memorial for the brave sailors, airmen, and Marines that perished in a distinct attack on our Navy's fleet. We thank all those who worked so heroically to save the 32 lives on the Oklahoma and continue to honor the 429 fallen shipmates' memories with a continued dedication to maintaining our fleet and reflecting upon the lessons learned of the past. We renew our pledge to help the generations heal and honor the sacrifices on a day that will live in infamy. As a fabric in our allied partnerships, which we continue to maintain the seaways, seaways from tyranny and promote freedom through our partnerships, I am thankful for all the people, military and civilian, who demonstrate bravery, warfighting excellence, adaptation, and resilience. This is our nation's legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Hensey. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tom Leatherman, Superintendent of Pearl Harbor National Memorial. Good afternoon, everyone, and aloha. Thank you for joining us today. In 2008, when the National Park Service assumed oversight responsibilities of this memorial, we not only assumed the responsibility of caring for the physical structure that you see over here, but we became the stewards of this part of our nation's history. Our theme this year is Legacy of Hope. And we are dedicated to making sure that the lives lost here, represented by the names on the memorial pillars, are not lost to history. We must remember them and what they represent in order to carry on their legacy. And the best way to do that is to share it. As many of you experienced, getting here is not as easy as we'd like it to be. You either came on some special shuttle or you have base access of some sort. It's not the same as being able to go to the Arizona Memorial where it's open to the public and anyone can come. We continue to work with our partners, including the Navy, to find ways to make this site as accessible as possible so that everyone has the opportunity to pay their respects and know the story of the Oklahoma and not the, just those who have base access. We want to make sure that there's lots of opportunities. At the main ceremony this morning, I challenged everyone to carry the, legacy, the Pearl Harbor legacy forward, sharing the stories of valor and sacrifice with your friends and families and instilling a sense of respect and inspiration in future generations. My hope is that you too will meet this challenge so that the legacy of the Oklahoma is carried on for generations to come as well. I want to share my gratitude for all of you again for being here today and I also, I'll just go a little off script here, this is the largest gathering that I've seen at the Oklahoma ceremony and I'm really touched to see so many people here and I, I see the hope in all of you and being able to help carry this forward so thank you again 
Mahalo. Thank you, Superintendent Leatherman. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction. Let us pray. Immortal, eternal, invisible God, as we conclude this ceremony, once again, we thank you for your presence. And we thank you for each of these in attendance today. You have blessed us with memory. Lord, we are here today to say that we remember the Oklahoma. We remember those lives that were lost so long ago. And we pledge never to forget. Father, as we recall the suffering and the sorrow, the trial and the tribulation and the anguish that took place, we choose to look forward. We look forward with hope and to a future of peace. Again, Lord, we honor the memory of those who died on the Oklahoma. We honor the memory of those who survived. And we pray that we will demonstrate and exhibit their patriotism and their bravery. And now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, bless us and keep us. Make your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. Lift up your countenance upon us and grant us, each and every one, your peace. This we pray in your name, the name that is above every other name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for our rifle salute and the playing of taps.
Ladies and gentlemen, you may now be seated. This concludes our formal ceremony. I would like to thank all of those who participated in today's event and in the setup and procession, and those who joined us in honoring the USS Oklahoma and her crew. At this time, we will have two of our NPS employees come to the front with baskets. They will have uh, rose petals and also the names of the 429 fallen of the USS Oklahoma. We will proceed with reading of those names in just a few minutes and we encourage you to come up and take uh, flower petals to lay tributes at the base of the stands. Please maintain those cards if you grab the names. We don't want to end, have them end up in the harbor making a mess. Keep those names, but feel free to put those petals at the base of the, of the stands. At this time, guests are invited, uh, sorry. We will start the names in just a minute. As you depart, we invite you to view the historic photos that was provided by 